Today on Built to Last, America is back. Construction is roaring. There's tower cranes downtown. 1,200 jobs per crane. And what does a training center in Elk Grove, Illinois, and a returning Marine have to do with it? Very good. Let's find out on Built to Last. Built to Last is brought to you by the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Labor and Management Committee and Armstrong Ceilings. Faster, easier, better. Welcome to Built to Last. I'm Monica Peterson. And I'm Mark Nilsson. We're at the Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters Training and Apprentice Center where we learn that carpenters aren't born, they're built. Over the next half hour, we'll see how the talented and hardworking women and men of the trades learn their craft at this state-of-the-art facility. We'll also meet a military veteran who served his country and is now rebuilding his life. And speaking of rebuilding, as a nation, it's something we've always done well. How we've faced recent economic challenges has taught us that the trades are crafted not only to withstand crisis, but to help us get back on our feet. Our first story explores all of that and looks at how America is built to last. The American skyline is a portrait of endeavor and ambition. The country's storied highways and bridges weave a tapestry that tells a tale of the nation's mythic past and the bright promise of the future. The shining city on the hill has always been built on grand ideas, but also by the hands of its exceptional labor force. Proud workers have come together to be the backbone of this nation and the executors of this great experiment. We have always built, gotten our hands dirty, and cranes stand proudly above our cities as markers of our growth. As the troops came home from the Second World War, you knew they were home because you saw subdivisions and new housing springing up all across America. The returning veterans and new workers needed a place to live. And what did they do? They bought a home. They created neighborhoods, communities grew. With that, commercial opportunities, churches, all the things that came with it. So construction really is part of this hopeful American dream. As ever, the country met its challenges by reaching towards the sky. Temples of steel and glass rose to celebrate the triumph of freedom over fascism and the promise of the American economic engine. For those engaged in it, for example, the building trades, carpenters, and others. It is a great livelihood where their skills are uh, compensated for good work that they do. It's a collaboration of a lot of people working together as, at a common goal. I'm part of a, a project that's gonna be here for decades to come. You really get a sense of ownership. We build, build the skyline and you know, it feels better every day that we you know, put a stud in the wall. And that desire to keep moving forward is at the heart of the American dream and has been a clarion call not just for those born in America, but immigrants from all over the world striving for a better life. My father spent his childhood until his early teens in Dublin, Ireland. He's very proud to not only be an Irishman, but to be a dub. Jackie. I came over here in December 1964, followed my father, and my sister came with me. My father um, worked for Sears Roebuck, and my grandfather worked as a baker. I, would, I was always told when you're young, you know, get a trade. You can spend a fortune, but you can't spend a trade. His goal was to, was to try and get a union job, and typically, Guys with good jobs like that were making about 100 bucks a week. I went down to Erie Street and took a big, took the test. And got a job with Joe Denk. We worked for uh, IAD Construction. They had already built up uh, a considerable amount of side work. We told uh, the boss, you know, we take some time off and get the side work done and give him more work for his guys. and. Uh, we never went back. We started, and that was the start of Tank and Roach. They never looked back, I guess. It just kind of blossomed into another job, and they kept estimating and kept landing more work and kind of grew. We had three superintendents. 
and uh, and then we had around 40 foremen. And I send my sons out to work under them, you know. And so they, and when when they were sent out there, you're told you're a roach, so you better work harder and longer than anybody else. The largest that the company got to that we have that our record show was 580 carpenters, and I believe that was in 2005 or 2006. My thought was uh, to retire and. Uh, pass on my shares to my sons and I went and talked to my partner about it and he said well let me think about it and we sat down you know after a month or two and he said how about if you buy me out because he didn't have any children interested. Like so many participating in the American dream the Roaches had worked hard for their success but as 2007 came to a close they were confronted by a national nightmare. By mid-09 we were down to about 10 to 15 employees in the field, and probably about the same in the office. At Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions, we take great pride in making a positive difference in the lives of people. With the broadest portfolio in the industry and the technical performance to back it up, you can design and install with confidence. Our ceiling construction expertise, training, and pre-engineered ceiling solutions make it easy for you to seamlessly transition from one end of the building to the other. Improve construction efficiencies and keep every job on time, on budget, and on the mark with Armstrong Ceiling and Wall Solutions. Faster, easier, better. Keeping restaurants and hotels up to date with the latest design trends is a constant challenge. Finding qualified contractors isn't at finishingchicago.com. We work with top designers and general contractors who use the latest painting, drywall finishing, and wall covering techniques in Chicagoland's premier hotels and restaurants. The hospitality industry relies on finishingchicago.com as its free resource to find quality finishing contractors. For a great finish, start with finishingchicago.com. The Roaches were continuing to build their American dream as they came face to face with a national nightmare. My brother and I were coming up in the company during the beginning of the financial crisis. So by the time late 07, early 08 was rolling around, um, residential was down. The 2008 recession, when you look at the heart of it, occurred because people overbought they were signing up for mortgages, which on the front end were easy to handle, but then they ballooned into terms and conditions they couldn't live with. And they ended up losing their homes, and then the bottom fell out. Here we have this huge inventory of foreclosed homes, and construction just comes to a stop. The collapse extended to commercial construction. As the losses cascaded through the investment in commercial banks, the country was hit hard, and the cranes disappeared from the sky. I can think of some of our affiliates here at the CFL that were running food banks on behalf of their members. I can think of others that were uh, using other services, uh, wraparound services, to make sure that their members were taken care of. By mid-09, we were down to about 10 to 15 employees in the field, and probably about the same in the office. We made a decision with Terry and Patrick that we would, uh, we would stay with the union and we turn our attention towards the commercial market. And, whatever union market was left out there. He gave them, the bank, uh, first rights to everything he had. And um, it, was, it, it, it was interesting times. Just to get work, you had, to, you had to bid it so low that you just were hoping you would make money or break even on it. There wasn't a lot of big contracts coming in the door. Um, you know, we were still grinding away. Um, but my father had been through situations like that before. If we do not act boldly and swiftly, a bad situation could become dramatically worse. A great national effort in the face of crisis validated Roach's optimism. The A's are 60, the nays are 38. The 2009 stimulus bill played an integral part. H.R. 1 is agreed to, and a motion to reconsider that vote is considered made and laid upon the table. But the most important factor in the recovery was the bravery and resilience of the American labor force. I think the difference between organized labor and labor in general uh, is huge, especially in times of crisis. What you'll see that folks that were part of a labor movement um, had an organization behind them that was fighting to make sure that they uh, continued to have work, continued to have opportunities, and continued to help. And I guess that is the definition of 
perseverance, which is the American dream, which is, you know, if you work hard enough, there is opportunity. McCormick Place, one of the big construction places, the work we're doing on our airports, the works we're doing on our public transportation. We need to have a steady supply of uh, workers. We're building the communities. We're bringing in hospitals. We're bringing in schools. As we start building again, there's more confidence in the economy and growth in the overall economy. We think about the people working at the job site, but think about all the suppliers and all the materials and where they're coming from. That job that's created has a five to seven multiplier in the economy. Progress is my business. You know, this city is constantly being reborn. When I became mayor, there were 11 cranes in the air for office buildings, hotels. There is either permanent or operating right now, north of 40. 1,200 jobs per crane. We're probably uh, two, to, two to 250 in the field. We're working hard to earn our backlog and um, to create those opportunities so that you know, we can sign up more big projects. As we talk about jobs for the 21st century, it isn't just a matter of having a job. It's a decent job, one that you can think about raising a family with and, and have some pride in, in what you can achieve for your kids and for their future. We're back. Construction is roaring. There's tower cranes downtown. So anybody that's interested in being a tradesperson, now is the time to get into the program. They get trained by their local unions. They get put on a work site that respects organized labor and in turn, help create an economy. In Chicago, Illinois, job sites with a crane permit have increased from seven in 2010 to 43 in 2017. Each crane represents an average of 1,200 jobs for workers. With construction booming again, let's find out how America's next generation of skilled labor will be trained. I entered the apprenticeship program in uh, 1974 uh, as a cabinet maker. Just like everyone else, I started out as an apprentice, the gopher. I came through the Carpenter Training Center 21 years ago, uh, just like the students behind me. I can remember my first day of school, being nervous, and then the, the instructor, you know, kind of calming us all down. Um, I also remember very well the people that taught me my trade, the, the gentlemen that put me underneath their wings. Yeah, that's good. Removal. I think all trade unions discovered years ago that uh, training was the most important thing. The uh, Chicago Regional Council of Carpenters uh, uh, International has uh, 239 training centers throughout the United States and Canada. Fostering excellence is paramount to the CRCC's mission. For half of a century, the CRCC's Apprentices and Training Program has brought quality workers to the trades. There is no cost to come to our school. The CRCC and contractors cover the cost for each apprentice. For every hour worked in the field, a portion is returned to the training center. Apprentices are able to learn the trade debt-free while receiving college credit as they progress through the ranks. And the contractors? Their motivation uh, to invest in the training program is the people that they're going to get. We choose to be a union shop because really it's the quality of the people that we're getting. You know, it, we're only as good as the manpower we have and we consider our guys to be some of the best. You can almost look at a guy and know when he walks in the door whether he's been through the apprenticeship and whether he's a union guy or he's not. You can tell the difference in a heartbeat. The uh, enrollment process is we will put an ad in the papers mentioning that we are going to be taking in apprentices. Uh, they'll usually be a two-month window. Uh, they will go to a local union in their area uh, and submit their names. After securing a recommendation from their local, they take a proficiency exam. The proficiency test is uh, for mathematics and also for visualization. It's difficult because there's so many numbers. There's so many numbers. They might be all freaked out about geometry or trigonometry or algebra. Well, we don't even use those words. If they have a math problem or they don't succeed in passing the test, we will tutor them in the evening if they're willing to come back until they can pass the test. At the end, the really fulfilling part is when 
the light bulb goes on. We put the students that have passed their test in a lottery, and as we need students, we pull from that lottery. I'm a veteran, so, and I'm part of the brotherhood. Uh, the servicemen that come through the apprenticeship, they're very proud of what they've done, and they're very anxious to you know, take that pride and move it to the construction field. The uh, Chicago Regional Council is committed to hiring the heroes. Um, if a veteran comes in after he has taken and passed the test, we put them to the top of the list. But eventually, everyone in the pool wins the lottery and can enter the program. I have waited about um, a year and a half to get into this program, um, and I am very excited to finally get in. Good morning. Good morning, men. They come in for nine weeks. We get them ready for the field, get all their certifications, get their OSHA card. The union apprentices that we send out to a job site are more trained than anybody else in the industry. We teach them to measure twice, cut once. We give them pieces of wood to cut to start with. And just, they, all they do is practice, practice, practice. We're gonna do the dovetail, set up the dovetail jig and router. They're gonna know how to turn on a table saw, how to set up a drill press, how to use the various hand tools. And after nine weeks, the union finds them jobs. The, the school actually gives them $300 worth of tools, uh, basic tools, hand tools. They get paid to come to school. When they're working out in the field, they're also paid. Um, they go from first year to second year apprentice, third year apprentice, fourth year apprentice. Every three months, we go back for another class, a specific class. It's a curriculum. So you got to take courses, whether it's stairs, scaffold, rafters. Nobody can believe what we do here. Nobody can vision what a, this training center looks like. Our training center here in Elk Grove Village is 160,000 square feet. We have a facility which we call the annex across the street, which is 90,000 square feet. Well, let's figure all our materials an inch and a quarter, all right? We have 23 classrooms. 17 light. They're all in 12. How many reps? Three. We have about 20 shops. We have 20 full-time instructors, 20 part-time instructors. Right now we have around 1,700 students uh, going through the program. The uh, daily routine of an apprentice is, uh, first of all, they start, of course, early in the morning. I'm here maybe 7 o'clock. Classes start at 8. Excessive slag at the base of the metal after cutting it, what does that indicate? We have some early morning classroom time when we first get here. Uh, they will go to a classroom, discuss the project that they're working on in the shop. How thick is your ridge, guys? Maybe go through some blueprints. The instructor will mention what they're going to do today. And they get out and then start working in the shop. Everything we do is full size. So when we build a house, it's a full size house. When we're doing drywall, we're doing metal studs, we're doing uh, quite a few linear feet of it, just like you'd be doing out in the field. When they see what they've accomplished during the week and what they've built, uh, it's, it's something to see. Very good. Attitude means everything. If you own time, you're late. That's one of the first things that they taught me at the school. The biggest thing we try and still is work ethic. It's how we try to set ourselves apart from everybody else. You know, when you, when you start as an apprentice and you start working, you kind of are in the CRCC family. My father's a union carpenter. He has been my whole life. I'm 23, and you know, since then, my father's been bringing me on job sites. My wife actually was a cabinet maker. Uh, I met her, she went through the same program. I also had an uncle that was a carpenter. I had a neighbor that was a carpenter. Just being part of a union, there's a, um, a kinship. Our journeymen look out for our apprentices. As long as you show a genuine interest, they they love to show you what they know. If a student wants to be a carpenter, we will help them in any way to succeed. I got this laid out. Okay. These instructors, they do care. They'll stop you and they'll ask you like, hey, Mr. Tybor, how's everything? Is there anything you need? If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. And that makes you feel good inside. I want them to have the drive that I had, that's have the fun that I had building. My proudest moments of being an instructor is when I take a student who's never turned on a table saw before. They take a pile of pieces of material in front of them, have no idea even the names of them, and when they're all done, they have a finished cabinet, a finished countertop, finished toolbox. Um, it's wonderful. It's a source of pride as an instructor 
to see these guys develop. There isn't anything better that happens is when they come to our graduation and I'm able to shake their hand and they now are journeymen. That journeyman turns into a productive foreman, then he's a superintendent, and then hopefully they turn into a union contractor themselves. This is just the beginning. This is a start. It's great money, it's great benefits. I'm living the dream. Best instructor in the school right here. <laughs> we provide people with a career, a lifetime career. I said I worked a dozen jobs in between waiting for this course. He was on a waiting list for a long time, but he did not lose hope. Stabila, for over 125 years, has led the industry in measuring and leveling. Still manufactured in Germany since 1865, tradesmen rely on Stabila every day for its precision and durability. We continue to revolutionize the way we build with our lasers, levels, and laser distance measuring tools on commercial and residential job sites around the world. Stabila, how true pros measure. Meet the new family of Blaze Laser Measures from Bosch. Go ahead, turn it on and start measuring. It's that simple. The Blaze family offers a wide range of functions to tackle any measuring job. Extend your reach with accuracy up to a 16th of an inch. With Bluetooth enabled devices, Easily transfer measurements to your smartphone or tablet with free Bosch apps. Reach farther, work faster, and stay accurate with the Bosch Blaze family of laser measures. Measure on. Because he's a veteran, I think Rob is perfect for introducing our next story. We are so proud to have Rob North as part of our team. He's a Marine vet and a skilled journeyman carpenter. Thank you so much, guys. I am very proud to have served this great nation of ours, but I know firsthand that the challenges don't end for our soldiers when they leave the service. In fact, sometimes those who serve have to rebuild their own lives. I graduated from high school in 1989. I went to DePaul University for an academic scholarship for two years, which I conveniently kind of messed up once I learned what college was like and Nobody really makes you do whatever, you know. It's no, nobody makes you do anything, so. Subsequently, I ended up going and joining the Marines. Jason served in Afghanistan and Somalia. I got home uh, from the military in 2003, and I met my wife. We actually met um, when I worked at Providence Hospital. I was a registration clerk. I worked in the emergency room on the midnight shift. And that was my first time ever working a night shift. That was so difficult for me. I uh, had a plate of food. I was extremely hungry. I was just being nice. I had seen her a few times, spoke. She had a pretty smile. I asked her, did she, uh, did she want it? Like, are you hungry? She said, yeah, and took my plate of food and said thank you and walked away. And we've been an idol ever since. <laughs> Jason realized that if he wanted to be able to support a family, he needed a career. His best friend, a carpenter, recommended that he apply to enter the apprenticeship program. I first put my name on the list. It was a recession going on, so the schools they weren't really taking the apprentices in at the time because they had no place to employ him. And he was on a waiting list for a long time, but he did not lose hope. Worked a dozen jobs in between waiting for this course. He worked at home with Flossmore. He um, drove the school bus. He worked at Coca-Cola. In 2012, he finally got the call. I was all over it, like, yes, yes, yes. Best thing that ever could have happened. And Jason, well, he hit the ground running. It's really like going to college but getting paid instead of the other way around, you know? So it's, it's great for me, especially at my age. You know, I'm, I'm like a senior compared to the guys I'm working with. A torch tracker is the safest method of starting the torch. Is that true or false? Concentration um, is interior construction or basic general construction. Uh, I do everything from uh, layout to heavy gauge. 
In addition to his classwork, Jason is learning on the job. Deacon Roach is the company I work for. They are very thorough, very safety oriented. They like to show you uh, what's going on, how to do it right, the right way. Okay, Jason, you see me do this bead here, the stringer? Every three months, we go back for another class, a specific class. Watch your eyes, close my hood. Jason's current class is welding. It all like kind of correlates to, to the carpentry. Like you have to use the proper tool to do the proper job. So as far as welding goes, the gas is, you know, for one gas, it, you get a, a higher flame, a more intense flame. Another one you can use just because it doesn't emit as many fumes into the atmosphere. My military background has been able to allow me I don't know, maybe a step ahead of the next guy. I bring a certain demeanor and a certain discipline. Discipline, commitment, and an eye towards a greater goal. These values instilled in them while serving in the armed forces are indispensable for working the trades. And just like in the Marines, the Carpenters Union allows Jason to realize his full potential. Before um, this um, apprenticeship, he couldn't even hang a curtain. I probably would never pick up a screwdriver before. He's really handy around the house. Um, he goes over his mom's house and put up shelves. It's life changing. He's a family man. He's a God-fearing man. Um, look, I get up every morning and I'm blessed. Go! I'm blessed with family that I love and a way to provide. For Jason, carpentry seems like destiny. He made a joke, and he said, I th I know I'm in the right profession because Jesus was a carpenter. <laughs> and I just was like, you're right. This was my dream job, you know, because everything about it I love. Much like Jason Watkins, after I left the Corps, I too found my calling in carpentry. As a master craftsman, I continue to try and serve my country and my communities. In the coming episodes, I'm excited and proud to bring you stories of veterans who are crafting their lives anew, finding new ways to serve, and those who are supporting them. That's all for this episode of Built to Last. And remember the carpenter's rule, measure twice, cut once, but they never say which of the two measurements I should use to cut by. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Is it the top? Is it the bottom? You know, it's a good question. Visit the Built to Last website to learn about these topics and more.